This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this repeatable pattern tile using Affinity Designer. And then I'll be showing you how you can fill your objects with that pattern as well. And feel free to use the timestamps at the bottom of the video to skip around to any point you'd like. So first I'm going to create a new document. I'll come over here to where it says File and click on New. And then I want to change the units to pixels and then size this at 1280 by 1280 pixels and click Create. And what I want to do next is enable the grid on the page here. So we'll come up here to where it says View, where it says Show Grid, enable that. And now we want to change the grid type. So we'll come back up here to View and we'll go to Grid and Axis Manager. And I want to click on the Advanced tab over here. And where it says Grid Type, we're going to change that to Triangular. And if you don't have the spacing set to 64 pixels, I think it's 64 by default. If it's not, go ahead and type in 64, then click Close, and now we have our grid here. So finally, what we want to do is enable snapping, which is this little magnet icon over here. Just go ahead and click on that to make sure it's enabled. If it's already enabled, you're good to go. Next, we need to click on this little icon, this little arrow icon right here, to get this little drop down. And we want to make sure we have Snap to Grid enabled. So if you don't have that enabled, go ahead and click on that to enable it. And now we're good to get started. So in order to create this repeatable pattern, we first have to create a single tile that can be used to be uh, repeated infinitely. So let's go ahead and create that tile now. I want to zoom in on the canvas right here. To zoom in, I'm going to hold Control and roll up the mouse wheel a few times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this grid as a reference point to draw a simple three-part cube. So to do that, let's grab the pen tool right here. And let's snap to the intersection of one of these lines right here, where these lines intersect click on that, come up here, click on that, come over here, click on that, then down here, and then back to the starting point. So you end up with a shape like this. And now I want to fill this in with a dark shade of blue, or maybe like a bluish green. So I'll come over here to the color wheel, and I'll choose like a dark, or like a bluish greenish shade, and I will choose the darker version of that shade. Maybe I'll add a little more blue in there. And then I also want to get rid of that black outline as well. That black outline is known as a stroke. To get rid of that, Click on the stroke fill over here, this little circle back there to bring that to the forefront, and then click the little red slash next to it to disable it. And then click on the, uh, the fill color again to bring that back up to the forefront. And now I'm going to create another shape just like this, only the opposite way. So I'll start this one out here, and I'll come over here, then over here, up here, and back to the starting point so that we end up with this other shape. Now I want to color this in as well. I'm going to make this one uh, like a yellowish orange. I'll come over here and choose that. Let me uh, bring up the saturation of that. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And now I'm finally going to create one last shape in here so that it completes our cube. So I'm going to come up here to this point and then down here to the corner then over here to the middle, back to this corner, back to the starting point. And I want to make this one a light shade of blue. So let me grab one of these colors over here. Let me remove some of the saturation from there. And I'd say that's looking pretty good right there. That right there is what we're going for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some more objects going around this cube so that it makes it makes it so that this tile is a perfect is a square that can be re repeated over and over again. So let me grab the select tool. I want to take this yellow object right here, click on it to select it, and then hold Alt on the keyboard and click and drag it to create a duplicate copy like that. And then I want to take this duplicate copy and snap it right in right over here to the top left. And I want to do the same thing with this piece right here, only I'm going to snap this to the top right. So select it, and then hold Alt and click and drag, and then put this over here like that. And I'm going to create another duplicate of this copy. Hold Alt, click and drag, put this one over here, like that. And I'll take this yellow copy, hold Alt, click and drag, and put this over here. And I'm going to create another copy of this one, put this over here, take this one, make a copy of this one, and put this over here like that. And what we want to do now is we want to make this into a rectangle. I just want to fill in these, ga fill in these gaps right here with this light shade of blue. So let's go back to the pen tool, and let's draw in a shape closing in this gap right here. And let's make this the same shade of blue that this is. To, to do that, we're going to use the uh, color picker, which is over here. Or you can just press the letter I on the keyboard and select that color. And then press I again to get back to the uh, the pen tool. And I'm going to create another shape up here to fill in this gap with. And again, I'm going to make this the, shape, the same color. Press I on the keyboard, fill it in with that color. There you go. 
So now we need to fill in these other sides as well, but we already have the two shapes drawn. So let's just create duplicates of them. Let's go back to the select tool. Let's take this shape, hold alt, click and drag it to create a copy of it and snap this right in here like that. And then I'm gonna create another copy of this one, hold alt, click and drag. And I wanna rotate this around, or actually what you can do is you can just flip this up here where it says flip vertical, click on that and there you go. F snap that in there like that. And then create a duplicate copy again, hold alt and then click and drag. Snap that in there like that. And finally, we'll take this object right here, duplicate it, flip this horizontally, and then snap this in here like that. And we now have, once we snap this in here, we now have our rectangle that can be used to create this pattern if you stack copies of them next to each other infinitely. So let's group this all together. Let's click and drag over all of it and go to uh, Layer, Group, and now I want to zoom out. I'm going to hold control, roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out. We can get rid of the grid now. We don't need that anymore. I'll come up here to where it says view, where it says show grid. Get rid of that. And then we can disable snapping as well. We don't need that anymore either. And I'm just going to take this little object and put this to the top left over here just so it's out of the way. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this as a PNG image. And then I'm going to use that as a bitmap fill later on. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's come over here to where it says the the, uh, the export persona. You should have this icon that consists of three little circles. Click on that. And over here in the layers menu, we're looking for this object right here, which is group. And I'm gonna click this button down here that says create slice. And once we create a slice, I'm gonna come over here to the slices menu, and we should have a separate exporting slice for this object right here. Now I don't wanna export the background, so let me check, let me, un let me deselect that little checkbox right there so that we're not exporting the background. And I'm gonna change the name of this slice one. I'm gonna name this something like a pattern tile. You can name it whatever you want, the title, the name of it's irrelevant. And let's bring down here, let's click on this this little arrow, arrow to get the uh, this little menu to pop out here. And it'll show you the type it's gonna export it as. We wanna export it as a PNG, we wanna export it at 1x, and it's gonna show you the, the, uh, the title of the file right there. And now what I wanna do is click on Export Slices, and it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna put it on my desktop, click Export, and there you go, it should be in there now. What we can do now is we can come back over here to the, uh, the designer persona, and we can now use this tile as a pattern fill. So let me take this actually and just get rid of it. We don't need that. You can press delete on the keyboard. Or if you want, you can keep it there and save it to work with it later on. What I'm gonna do now is grab, um, let's say uh, an ellipse, right? You can use any shape you'd want. I'm gonna use an ellipse here. Click and drag to create an ellipse. Hold shift to lock the uh, proportion so you get a nice round circle like that. And then I'll come up here to this icon right here that says fill tool. I'm gonna go to the fill tool and from the type dropdown, I'm going to choose bitmap. And it's gonna ask you what bitmap you wanna fill that with. And I'm gonna choose our pattern tile that we just created. And there you go, it filled it with that title, uh, with that tile. So what you could do now is if you notice, you have these little nodes right here. This little center node changes the position of the pattern. And these nodes up here to the top and to the right, it changes the size and the rotation of them. So if you want, you can hold shift and lock it onto the horizontal axis like that, or you can rotate it around like this. So you get something like that. You scale it all the way down or bring it all the way up, whatever you wanna do. And there you go. That is how you can fill an object with a pattern in Affinity Designer. So if I let go of that, and let me grab the select tool now and click off of this to deselect it. If you notice, there's a little bit of a problem here. I don't know if you could see it on your screen, but I, I definitely see it on mine. There are tiny little white gaps between each background tile. Now the reason why this happens has to do with the nature of vector graphics in general. It's just a mathematical error when it comes to working with vectors. I get the same problem when I work with Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator or any vector program for that matter. A little workaround for this is what you can do is you can take this object and create a duplicate copy of it. I'm gonna hold Alt, click and drag to create a duplicate copy. And I wanna fill this in with one of the colors that was used in this pattern. So let me grab the dropper again, and I'm just gonna choose a random color, maybe like uh, this light blue right here. And there we go, grab the select tool. And I wanna lower this down beneath the original, the original circle. So I'm gonna hold control and press the left bracket key like that. And then I wanna click and drag over both of them and center them up on the, uh, over here, center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And those gaps, should be gone now. 
And I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating this um, pattern tile and then using it as a pattern fill in Affinity Designer. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.